This video provides an overview to the basic EMP study. EMP stands for Evaluating the Measurement Process. This is an analysis process de developed by Dr. Wheeler that helps you analyze a gauge R&R study much more effectively. But basically, the design is a gauge R&R study. So in this example, we're going to have three operators. They're going to measure four parts, three times each. So here's the data. Operator A measures part one three times, part two three times, etc. Now we're going to take this data and we're going to show what the output from the basic uh, EMP study is. You start by creating a range chart. And the key point here is that the range chart shows the repeated measurements for each operator for each part. For example, for operator A, here's part one. He measured it three times, and this is the range that he had on those three measurements. Now, what's the difference in those range? Remember, it's the same operator and same part. The only difference in that range is the variation in the test method. Okay, So each of these ranges is an estimate of the variation in the test method. And the overall average in this case, then, is a measure of repeatability. So in this case, though, it has to be in control. This R chart has to be in statistical control because that means that the repeatability between the operators is consistent. And this is a measure of that repeatability. Then you can create an X bar chart. And here what we're doing is we're showing the average for each operator part combination. So operator A runs part one three times, and here's the average. He runs part two three times, and here's the average. The same thing then for operator B and operator C. Then we calculate the overall average as well as the control limits. Now the control limits in this case are bet uses the average range. And remember, the average range is, is based on repeatability. So what's that mean? That means that this control limits that we have here, the upper difference between the upper control limit and the lower control limit, this represents the variation that is obscured by measurement error. Okay, it is the part that's obscured by measurement error. In this case, remember, you want out of control points because that range, average range is based on the reproducibility. What you want to do is now is to not worry about the points that are within the control limits, but take a look at the points that are beyond the control limits to see if they're similar for each operator. You can see these three points are pretty similar for each operator. But down here, there are three that are below the lower control limits for part four, and you begin to wonder whether there are some differences there. That could be because there's a possible interaction between the operators and parts that needs to be evaluated. From there, you create an analysis and main effects chart. And what you're doing here is you're plotting the overall average for each operator. And you're looking for, are there any biases between the operators? Now, the limits in this case are not control limits. They're analysis and main effects limits. But you interpret them pretty much the same way. If you have points beyond the limits, it indicates there's a bias between the operators. And in this example, we have operator C is out of, out of the limits and operators A and B within. So there appears to be a difference. And we need to find that reason and correct it because it will increase the measurement error. The next thing you do is you create an analysis of mean ranges chart. And in this case, what you're doing is you're plotting the average range for each operator on this chart. And again, you're going to have limits. These are analysis of mean range limits, but again, similar in how you can interpret it as control charts. All points have to be between the limits. If not, the reasons for this should be found and corrected. So these charts give you an idea about whether or not the measurement system is consistent and predictable. And if it is, you can go on again to talk about calculating variances, because you're going to use those variances to find some ratios that you really need to begin to quantify the results. And here's the overall equation for uh, uh, variation in a process. Here we have uh, sigma x squared, which is the product measurements variance. It's the measurement of a variance of all the products uh, measurements. Here we have sigma p squared, which is just the product variance. And then we have the measurement system variance. So our overall variance, or total variance, is equal to the product variance plus the measurement system variance. And we can take that measurement system variance and split it in two. We're going to split it in two to, to where we have sigma p e squared, which is the test method variance. That's the repeatability. The p e comes from pure errors, what Dr. Wheeler calls it. And then we also have, and it's the first r in this, and then we also have our operator variance. And that's the reproducibility. So we're going to take our measurement error and divide it into two parts, repeatability and reproducibility, which, of course, is the gauge R&R. And, R. and we're going to start with the repeatability. Assuming that the range chart and analysis and mean range chart show no outliers, you can estimate the repeatability error 
by the average range. And in this case, the standard deviation of the measurement system, not the variance, is equal to the average range divided by D2, which is a control chart constant, which is this value for this example data. And then you simply square that to get the variance that we were talking about in the equations before. But before we move on with those other uh, variances, we want to focus a little bit on what you can use this standard deviation here for a pure error. What you can use that for is to calculate something called the probable error. And this probable error represents, it happens is that 50% of repeated measurements are going to fall within plus or minus one probable error of the average. And so you can go through, and this is the equation for the probable error. It's simply that standard deviation of the measurement system we just calculated times 0.675. So you can calculate that. What this does, though, is defines the effective for us resolution of the measurement process, something that gauge R and R analysis never really do. So the resolution should be between 0.2 probable errors and 2 probable errors. And the example of, that we're doing with our data back at the first, you're measured to the closest point 0, 0, 0, 5. So that's our resolution or measurement increment. So you do your calculations of 0.2 probable errors and 2 probable errors, and you discover that this falls within 0.2 probable errors in two, and so our resolution is okay. Our measurement increment is not. The key is okay. The point is, key point is, if it's not between 0.2 probable error and two, you're going to need to change it. Now we go ahead and calculate the rest of the variances. We're not going to go with, through all the calculations here, but this is the repeatability that we already have. That's our uh, sigma PE squared. Okay, we can calculate the operator uh, variance here. There are equations to do that. We sum these two to get the overall error or the gauge R and R. And then we can also calculate the product variance equations for doing that and get the total variance. So this column is the one we're really interested in, the percent of total. So with this example data, we can see the repeatability is responsible for 12.4%, repeat producibility 3.8%, R and R is the sum of those with some rounding 16.1%, and then our product's responsible for about 84% of the total variance that we see. And this value right here, this product uh, uh, variance that we see, this is something called the inner class correlation coefficient, or rho. This is the value that Dr. Wheeler used to develop his classification system for measurement systems. And here's his way of rating the measurement system. You take your value of rho, and ours was about 0.84, so it's between that and uh, in this section here, between 0.8 and 1. And it tells you the type of class. In this case, it's a first class uh, monitor. And he, ra he rated these by talking about three different processes. The reduction of process signal. You know, how much does a, a, a measurement system with this uh, row reduce a process signal? What's the chance of detecting a plus or minus 0.3 standard error shifts? And what's the ability to track future process improvements, because that's a key thing. As you improve your process, if you don't change your measurement system, you're going to increase how much variation is due to the measurement system. Okay, and this is a first-class monitor. There's a lot more on how to in, uh, interpret this rating system in his book as well as on, on our website. Now, another thing that the EMP study does is it allows you to look at manufacturing specs and precision to tolerance ratio. And won't get into all the details here. There's much more in his book and on our website. But basically what it involves is saying, okay, if we have our manufacturing specs essentially set at our watershed specifications, that if we have a part that's measured between those specs, there's a 64% chance that that will be within spec. But what you can begin to do is to decrease your your specification range by moving them in a certain probable error each way. So if you move it in each plus or minus one probable error on each side, you have 85%. If you come in plus or minus two probable errors on, on the sides, you have 96%. Three probable errors, 99. Four probable errors, 99.9%. .9%. And what this uh, EMP study does is it comes in and it tells you how much of what those specification limits would be Based for those manufacturing specs, for example, 96. And it also tells you then how much of the tolerance range was taken up by, in, by moving the specs closer together based on those uh, uh, probable errors. And so there's a lot more of this, again, in his book and on the website. So basically, with a basic EM stu EMP study, you're getting a lot of information. Again, the differences in operators' averages and ranges, if they exist, 
the potential of operator part interactions. You calculate all your variances you need as well as those ratios. You have the probable error to see if the measurement increment is appropriate. You classify your measurement system. You calculate your manufacturing specifications as well as your precision to tolerance ratio. So you should be using the basic EMP study to analyze your gauge R&R results. Thank you.